Great. Sounds good. All right, good, good evening, everyone. The City of Boston Zoning Board of Appeal hearing for July 20th, 2023 is now in session. This hearing is being conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the open meeting law, including the updated provisions enacted by the legislature last year. The new law allows the board to continue its practice of holding virtual hearings until March, 2023. This hearing of the board is being held remotely via the Zoom webinar event platform. This hearing is also being recorded. <clears throat> in order to ensure this hearing of the board is open to the public, members of the public may access this hearing through telephone and video conferencing. The information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda, which is posted on the public notices page of the city's website, boston.gov. Members of the public will enter the virtual hearing as attendees, which means you will not see yourself on the screen and you will be muted throughout unless administratively unmuted when asked to comment. Board members, applicants, and their attorneys or representatives will participate in the hearing as panelists, and they will appear alongside the presentation materials when speaking. Panelists are strongly encouraged to keep video on while presenting to the board. As with our in-person meetings, comments and support will be followed by comments in opposition. The order of comments is as follows. Elected officials, representatives of elected officials, and members of the public. The chair may limit the number of people called upon to offer a comment and the time for commenting as time constraints require. For that reason, the board prefers to hear from members of the public who are most impacted by a project. That is those individuals who live closest to the project. If you wish to comment on an appeal, please click, on, click the raise hand button along the bottom of your screen in the Zoom webinar platform. Click it again and your hand should go down. When the host sees your hand, you will receive a request to unmute yourself. Select yes and you should be able to talk. If you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star nine to raise and lower your hand. You must press star six to unmute yourself after you receive the request from the host. Those called upon to comment will be asked to state their name and address first and then can provide their comment. In the interest of time and to ensure that you have enough time to do so, please raise your hand as soon as Mr. Stembridge reads the address into the record. Do not raise your hand before the relevant address is called or the meeting host will not know to call upon you uh, at the appropriate time. These instructions will be repeated throughout the hearing. Okay, Mr. Stembridge. Roll call. Good, good evening, Madam Chair, present. Good evening, uh, Ms. Betabraza. Good evening, Madam Chair, present. Good evening. Uh, I will turn it over to Mr. Sembridge. Uh, yes, we will start with the hearing for 5 p.m. First case is BOA 1464901, the address being 44 Brooks Street. Is the applicant and or their representative present? Do we have a Mr. Martinez, Hector Martinez, or someone representing him? Sí, ya estoy presente. Okay, are you are you the applicant? Ah, uh, yeah, please. I'm okay, the applicant. Great. Can you introduce yourself uh, and put your name and address on the record? Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Hector Martinez. Soy el representante de la comunidad de Brooks. Great. Can you introduce yourself uh, put your name and address into the record and then just uh, let us know what relief you're seeking? Eh, el nombre mío es Hector Martinez. A 44 Brooks Street. Okay. Is someone translating for him? I, yes, I can you're help. translating. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, he just went mute. Uh Mr. Martinez, we, we actually need you to present your case. Okay, sorry about that. We're here with Hector now. So, Hector, básicamente están pidiendo que tú presentes el, el caso. Ahora, okay. yeah. el caso es solo para vender ice cream. So, it's to es sell ice cream. Yeah. Este caos. Este caos. Sí, la persona solo compra el lado y se lo lleva. Oh, it's, and it's for takeout. Eh, me, me beneficia a mí primero y a la comunidad porque tienen los lados cerquita. Y beneficio a la persona a la trabajo a dos o tres personas más. So it, it benefits to me and it also benefits the community who has another ice cream place close by uh, and also benefits some folks that I'm able to hire because of that. Okay. Any questions 
from the board? I have no questions, pretty straightforward. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, may I have public testimony, please? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time, the Mayor's Office likes to defer to the judgment of the board. Uh, at this time, our office is unaware of any concerns related to this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Chair, if you could, I don't know if we could give testimony on behalf of Mutual Aid East. We're also serving as um, actors translators, but if that's possible, we could also provide some testimony. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you for that. Um, so I'm Leo and I'm here with Gladys. We're part of the Mutual Aid East team, which is a neighbor to neighbor support network in East Boston. Uh, Hector's part of our network uh, and we uh, appreciate him for everything he does to contribute to the community and, and fully support, um, you know, really the, the store in general, who's been very friendly to folks. It's a, it's a very well, well known place. Gladys, I don't know if you want to add to that too. It's a very cool place. Um, um, everything they serve is very good. And a lot of people go there and everyone enjoys it. Thank you. So, yeah, we, it's in support of, of Hector and his application to for the permit to sell ice cream. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Any other raised hands? Yeah. Hearing none, may I have a motion? Is that a, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval. Estas aprobado. May I have a second? Second. Excellent. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Betterbraza? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Yes. Next, we have case BOA 1416327 with the address of 964 Saratoga Street. Is the applicant and or their representative present? Yes, this is attorney Britton Munson uh, representing the applicant. Great. Can you tell us what relief you're seeking? Of course. So we are looking, the restaurant has an existing patio space that they already use uh, right there along the side of the building. And so they're looking to just put a, essentially a canopy, a little bit of a, a roof just off the side of the building to cover it from the elements, things of that nature uh, for their uh, guests that are already using it. They've been using it for years now. And so they're just looking for a little structure to go right above it. Excellent. Uh, any questions from the board? No questions, Madam Chair. Thank you. Hearing none, may I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment in this board. Uh, we had the applicant uh, disperse flyers out to a butters and uh, no concerns were raised. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board at this time. Thank you. Thank you. We have no other raised hands. No. Okay, with that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Uh, Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Betterbraza? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 1480844, with the address being 500 Boylston Street. Is the applicant and or their representative present? Uh, yep, Daniel Brennan here. Okay, and what relief are you seeking? Um, so this is a space over at 500 Boylston Street, formerly a retail store, Talbot's. It's been subdivided by our landlord and a piece of it is um, looking to become a Starbucks coffee shop. Uh, we recently closed one over at 443 Boylston. So we were looking for a replacement. Um, and the uh, restaurant takeout use 36A, and I believe the restaurant use 37 are conditional. So uh, that's why we're here before the board. Got it. So you closed the one that's on that corner? I can't remember. Yeah, Berkeley and Boylston. Boston. Okay. Yeah. Understood. Uh, straightforward. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have public testimony? Yes. Sorry, Madam Chair. Just give me one sec. 
Uh, yes, at this time, the mayor's office like to defer judgment to the board. Um, our office conducted an abutters meeting on April 4th uh, with no community members in attendance. The applicant also reached out to the neighbor association of Back Bay and uh, the Back Bay Association. Our office is unaware of any concerns at this time. Uh, with that, we'd like to defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Any other raised hands? No other raised hands. No other raised hands, Madam Chair. Thank you. Hearing none, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Barraza. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 1480839 with the address of 2 Park Plaza. Is the applicant and the board their representative present? Uh, yep, Daniel Brennan here for Starbucks Coffee again. Okay. Same drill. What are you yep. Talking? So um, this one is on the corner of Park Plaza and Boylston, right by the Public Gardens. It's currently a Boloco uh, Mexican fast casual. They actually reached out to the Starbucks real estate team to um, get out of their lease. Um, we recently um, closed another Starbucks close by in the transportation building. Um, at, over on Charles Street, I think it's zero Charles Street or something like that. So we were looking for a replacement and uh, this is a good fit. The, we're not technically changing the use, but um, because the original decision said for this petitioner only, we're looking to um, remove that and have it for Starbucks. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the board? Hearing none, may, uh, may I have a testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time, the Mayor's Office likes to defer to the judgment of this board. Uh, our office is unaware of any concerns with this proposal at this time. Thank you. Hi, this is um, Laura from Council President Flynn's office. I would like um, to go on full support on behalf of Council President Flynn. And also for the last one, 500 Bolton Street, we also um, are going on full support with that one as well. Thank you. Okay, with that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Better Barraza? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thanks so much. Next, we have case of BOA 1447530, the address being 1250 Foylston Street. Is the applicant and or the representative present? Anyone for 1250 Boylston Street? Yes, sir. Okay, can you uh, state your name and address and uh, just let us know what you're proposing? All right, my name is Hashim. We're proposing like a food trailer, a Coconutella Convent. Uh, to 1250 Boylston Street. I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch what it was. It was like a food trailer at the location okay. of uh, 1250 Boylston Street. Okay, and what are you serving? Are we serving like um, waffle and French crib with a Middle East signature flavors, serving like high quality product to our customers with the bang in mind of the economic needs of the community. Got it. Any questions from the board? No, no questions at all. All right, with that, uh, may I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment of this board. Uh, some background information on the community process. Uh, we had the applicant uh, flyer uh, property owners within 300 feet and reach out to the Fenway Civic Association. Uh, we heard from some folks with some initial concerns, but the applicant worked to address and answer all those questions. And those abutters have stated that they no, have no objections to the proposal at this time. Our office is unaware of any further concerns. With that, we'll defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Thank you. Any other raised hands? No other raised hands, Madam Chair. Thank you. Hearing none, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval. 
May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Barraza. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Next, next we have case BOA 1467752 with the address of 10 St. Margaret Street. Is the app applicant and or the representative present? Uh, yes. Um, uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Attorney John Fulgini on behalf of the applicant. I'm joined today by Jim and Katie Murphy, uh, together with Chris Drew, who is their architect. Um, before I begin this presentation, I would like to remind the board that this proposal came before you in August of 2021. At that time, the project was approved with the proviso of no side yard violation. That proviso was justifiably so at that time, proposed by Ms. Bena Barraza. So I'm very glad that we're here before you again this afternoon. Um, at that time, the Murphys were not represented by council and had a difficulty articulating the support they, and the hardship uh, this proposal involves. Uh, they spent over a year looking for a redesign. Since that time, they spent over a year looking for redesign options that uh, just wouldn't work. And during that time, Katie Murphy was diagnosed with a serious medical condition, which will require ongoing outpatient and inpatient treatment at Mount Auburn Hospital. Now, turning to the side addition, which is the reason we are here. At the earlier hearing, they didn't provide testimony from Travis Stewart, who is the abutter where the addition will be located. Mr. Stewart is the only one impacted, and he will uh, testify later to the board. This neighborhood is unique. They have a single family that is located in a two-family zoning subdistrict. Additionally, they have where this property, when I say the, the property is unique, they have a proposed cannabis delivery facility that will be is uh, going through permitting right now directly behind their house. And that building, if you look at the, your tablets, is basically a zero uh, rear yard setback. Looking at this neighborhood, you will see houses that are very tight. In fact, the building to the Murphy's right is approximately three feet from their house. From house to house, it's about three feet. This addition, while requiring a setback violation to the lot line, separates the houses as there is a driveway of approximately 12 feet in between the two structures on the left side of the property. And, in, and this addition is only 168 feet, and this living space is required <clears throat> for Kate, Tim, Jim, and their four kids. I, when they first came to my office, I agreed with the original decision from the board. Uh, communication was lacking and the whole picture not presented. The Murphys have lived in this house for 27 years. Katie's parents had lived in this house prior to that. This is a house that she grew up in. They need to stay here for ongoing medical treatment. If you guys look at this house, it's in total disrepair. If they were to sell it, they wouldn't be able to live in the Boston area, which would really probably a distant suburb, which would seriously disrupt their treatment plans and their children's relationships. We hope today <clears throat> story will respectfully allow reconsideration with all the facts before you. Um, I will at this point just turn it over to Chris Drew to walk you through the plans. But in essence, this proposal was approved basically as is with the proviso uh, of a no side yard setback. And we're here just to address that today. Um, I'm here for any questions. And Chris Drew is here to present plans. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Um, so basically what we're talking about, it's a, the garage itself would be about 10 foot six wide by about 25 feet deep. Uh, on the second floor, there would be uh, one, one additional bedroom, uh, which would be about 10 six by 16. Um, happy to answer any other questions or, or dive further in if, if anybody has anything specific. Madam Chair, I have a question just for clarification. Yes. Um, so um, when I was reviewing the file, there was a letter saying that originally there was um, a side yard of three foot two from six inches. Is that still applicable? Yes, that's so if, if you go back to the landscape plan, that three foot two is pre-existing on the right hand side. So that oh, little the right -hand side. Okay. Yes. Yep. Got it. So the three foot two is on the right hand side. And then what is is the six inches on the left hand? Correct. Yes. So okay. that little brown, you know, the little brown. Yeah, so six area. inches. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. I thought you had modified it. Okay. Thanks. Nope. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from the board? Hearing none, can I have a public testimony, please? 
Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment of this board. <clears throat> Back on information on the community process, our office hosted in the Butters meeting on May 31st. Understand it was a productive meeting where the applicant addressed questions and concerns that neighbors raised. Uh, they then went on to meet with the Civic Association, which is the McCormick Group, uh, and they voted to support this proposal. Uh, we're unaware of any concerns at this time. We'd like to defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Ma Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McGeckrin, City Councilor Frank Baker's office, we'd like to go on record in support of the applicant today. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty, Council to go on record in support. Um, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, Caitlin Stapleton from Council Murphy's office. Um, the applicant completed a thorough community process and has support from direct butters and neighbors. Um, the councilor sent over a letter of support, but would also like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. I think the abutter is on. Is that right, Mr. Travis? Uh, yeah, I'm muted. Hi, uh, yes. Um, yes, I'm Travis Stewart, 8 St. Margaret Street. I'm the director of butter. Um, known Jen and Kim and Katie for well over a decade now. Um, I'm in full support as the director of butter for this, and also from the Civic as a board member of the McCormick Civic, we also support that too. Thank you. Any other raised hands? Phone call ended in 7163. You're unmuted. Yes, thank you. Um, my last name is Strum. I live directly across the street from Mr. Murphy. I've known his family for 30 years, going to the parents before him, and I'd just like to say I'm in full support of his project. Thank you. Thank you. No other raised hands, Madam Chair. Okay, uh, with that, may I have a motion? Um, Madam Chair, I'm always a big advocate yeah, for making sure the most affected girl butters are in support of your renovation, given that, given that um, the lawyer presented all the arguments and support for the project, I would like to put forward a motion uh, of approval um, with BPDA design review. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Ms. Betabrazo. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, you everybody. Very much. Next, we have case 1399573, the address being 16 Holborn Street. It's the applicants and or their representative present. Good afternoon. I'm actually the homeowner. The applicant is Oswald, who's my contractor. He's also on mine. Um, if you pull up the, the plan, it's an additional dwelling unit or space for me and my two children that are 11 and 12 now. I have met with the, um, it's called the HGGOBA on March 27th to present my plans. So that's the community. They have agreed and they said they back me on anything that I do. I believe somebody from the community is online to support me. Yeah, I don't know if there's any- And other. what are you presenting? What are you seeking relief on? Um, to get approval. Well, I needed to meet with the Board of Appeals to get approval to continue building, well, adding that additional area in my basement. Um, and just and what what kind of living space is it going to be? Bedrooms or just a family room? Family room. Okay. Any question, other questions from the board? I don't have any questions. Okay. With that, may I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time, the Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment of this board. Some background information on the community process. Uh, ONS hosted an abutters meeting on March 27th, where abutters expressed support for the project and the applicant. Uh, they went on to connect with uh, Mike Kozu from Project Right, uh, where support was also given from that group as well. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board at this time. Thank you. Any other raised hands? Oh, other raised hands, Madam Chair. Thank you. With that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with the proviso that there will be no building code relief. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Bedabraza? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. 
Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 1399546 at the address of 45 Winthrop Street. Is the applicant and or the representative present? Oh. Yes, good, um, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Uh, Secretary Attorney Joseph Feaster from the law firm of Dane Torpy, 175 Federal Street, Boston 02110. Um, I wanted to uh, to present this case and I wanted to do it in this particular format, if you will, Madam Chair. I would like to just begin the process. I would like to have introduced my uh, clients to have them say something on the record. I'm going to ask the um, engineer, Mr. Marino, to talk about the project, and then I wanted to bring to the board's attention the support that the applicant has uh, for uh, for this particular proposal. I will I will say at the outset, this is a house on uh, at uh, um, at 45 uh, Winter Street, which was built in 1890. My clients bought it. We're just, this is not the one we're going to use. I can use this one later if we can just put the plan up for the moment. Thank you, uh, Ms. Hayes. Um, the board uh, property was built in 1890. They bought the property in 2021 and the condition which we're talking about and which will be discussed particularly by Mr. Marini is, uh, is exactly what uh, is being sought here. They had a, they purchased this property in 2021 and my client's names are Ms. Uh, Valerie De Desmangles and um, Michael Williams. They bought the property in 2021. At the time, they were told that there was two spaces that were uh, there for parking, uh, and they proceeded in in that regard. Today, what there is being sought, and I'm surprised with some of the concerns that have been raised in the neighborhood, but that's uh, you will hear speak here references to that. This is simply a uh, an effort in order to move a, um, uh, um, a curb curb cut a particular distance and I'm going to leave the mathematics and the dimensions of that to Mr. Marini in order to elaborate on. But I think it's important for the, for the board to hear exactly the relationship that my clients have both through family means but as well as personally to this neighbor. So if you would give me the benefit of doing that, Madam Chair, I would like to do that very, very briefly. So, um, Valerie, Michael, why don't you address the uh, board? Hello, board. My name is Valerie. Um, just introduce myself a little bit more. I grew up in Dorchester. I am an alum of MetGo and was afforded the opportunity to make friends throughout the city of Boston, including Roxbury, eventually leading me to my life partner, Michael, who is from Roxbury. I graduated from nursing school here in Boston and remain invested in the city and currently work at Mass General as an emergency department nurse. My shift hours are odd. I am a night nurse and usually get off at of work around three, four o'clock in the morning. Coming home around that time, safety and security is an issue um, for me. We bought the house in 2021 when we found out we were going to be starting a family and welcomed a son in February of 20. 22 and his safety as well to um, be able to get him in and out of the car safely off the street is very important to us as well. We are fortunate to have family members who are very involved in our lives and um, help take care of our son. In particular, my mom, she is handicapped and has mobility, um, limited mobility issues. And we are, we want to provide safe and easy access to the entry of the home um, to, for her benefit. The nearest off-street resident parking, visitor parking, sorry, is a quarter of a mile away from our house. The entire street is residential parking. Um, we are sandwiched between a church and also a school and during peak hours of pickup and drop off hours, as well as uh, church services, parking congestion becomes a problem, and we are seeking to have um, the ability for off street parking. All right. Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, so, my name is Mike Williams, and um, as Valerie mentioned, I grew up in Roxbury. 
I'm also a Metro alum, but I attended Boston Public Schools first, actually in Roxbury, right around the corner from the house that we purchased in 2021. And also played at the Boys and Girls Club, literally right, maybe 100 yards away from the house that, that we purchased in 2021. Um, my paternal, both my paternal and maternal great grandparents um, moved from the South to Roxbury to make that their home, um, to raise their families, and they've been invested in this community for close to 100 years. Uh, my mom worked as a elect, worked for an elected official actually too, um, in politics for a really long time. Um, and I remember being a high school student attending these EBA meetings regularly. I never would have thought that I'd be in one um, actually presenting to try to get a variance approved. Um, I want to also say um, my, my grandmother um, also is someone that has been very active in the political scene in Boston, Dorothea Jones, um, and she's someone that's been an inspiration to me my entire life. I know she's still right now currently serves on the Mayor's Reparations Committee. Um, and then uh, finally, my late grand great grandfather, or excuse me, my late grandfather uh, drove a cab all throughout the city of Boston in the 60s. He came up here from Birmingham, Alabama as a way to escape the things that were happening in the South at the in the 40s and the 50s. And he moved up here to support his family and to ensure that um, like me and like my, my, my cousins, my sister, we all got educated and we were in a position to actualize that American dream of owning a house. I attended college in Georgia, um, moved back here for graduate school. And my career, I worked in politics. I was a legislative aide for a while. Um, and then I transitioned to work for the city of Boston for over six years to help court-involved gang, involve young people throughout Roxbury, Dorchester, and Mattapan, get jobs and also finish their high school diploma or get into college. Currently, I work, in a, I work for philanthropy. Uh, I'm, uh, work for a major foundation in, in New England. Um, and it was important for me and Valerie to want to start and raise our family in the same community that gave us so much in a place that has, you know, such a rich familial history with us. Um, I want to ensure, obviously, my family is my priority now, but wanted to really ensure that Valerie is safe. Um, and knowing that, you know, over the past, we've had uh, squatters that have been in our building uh, under renovation, and we've also encountered folks from massing tasks that have been starting to pop up in the area in the early mornings around the time that Valerie gets off of work. So we're really just trying to prioritize our safety and also the issues that Valerie raised are also relevant. Uh, thank you and I'll pass it back to Joe. Okay, maybe can I, we ask some questions, Mr. Feaster? Yes, since... yes. well, you can. I, and in fact, if you want, Ms. Marini can talk about the project in terms of what's planned. Is that, I, that's what I was heading to, Ms. Dog. Okay, do. thank you. Okay, Ms. Marini, can you describe what you are, what you were proposing? Rob Marini, Native Tech, 31 Monroe Street in Lynn. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes, sir. we can hear you, yes. Okay, uh, the curb cut existed at 18 feet. We're just shifting and centering it on, on the lot of 45 uh, so that uh, we can enable two cars to park in an angle and access. Now the concrete, the sidewalk will be repaved concrete sidewalk. And the, basically the curb cut remains the same and it's just shifted so that two cars can access independently. Uh, the steps, uh, there's a curb that really kind of controls the progression of the vehicle so that it can stop at the curb, at the curbing and not interfere with pedestrians exiting from the house. So, and uh, any handicapped person can access through the gap between the curbing, which isn't needed in the, where the gap is because the cars are at an angle. The, the whole purpose of the curb is to essentially it's a wheel stop. So there's improvements to the sidewalk. There's improvements to the front yard there that there was a, low retaining wall it just was in disrepair anyway so the actual paved surface is bituminous between the curbing and the concrete sidewalk so it's a smooth surface to access um, uh, we believe that um, it'll be safe and it'll be a clean treatment of uh, the front yard space and overcome any kind of um, uh, configurational nonconformity that is being questioned or could be questioned. How are the cars parking presently? You're showing them that you want them to be able to park at this angle. So how are they parking now? 
I can share the screen. There's an existing survey. You can't share screens, but if you could just just are, describe it. Are they just parking straight? Like yeah, they're parking straight, and, or um, in the in the wall is close. Um, I'd have to look at the survey, but I, this is a while ago that we looked at it. But I believe that um, the wall is too close to the sidewalk that the wall will have to be removed, and so it'll, this curb will take its place, but it'll be put back further into the lot. So there's not enough room right now, basically. And the way do, the, way the do, configuration of the site is. Do any of your other neighbors have front yard parking? Um, Mike or Mr. Uh, Feaster? Front, is there any other neighbors have parking? Front yard parking, because I, I mean, this is probably not a question for you, but uh, this, the second part of my question is probably not for you, but just as a matter of whether those are legal front yard parking spots or not. Maybe that's a Samantha question. Well, I, uh, Ms. Dong, two things I can answer for you in the question that you're inquiry to Mr. Marini. One is prior to this, only one car was parked in. They did not park two, two vehicles in there because they could not. Uh, okay. The, uh, to your other question is that's the reason for the photographs that were there before. It shows a, uh, if you look and may not want to give the board because I know you're pressed for time in terms of that, but I submitted for the record and it's here in terms of all of the places uh, throughout the neighborhood, throughout this community and on Winter Street in terms of the type of parking spaces, including some of the properties that are right adjacent to this, uh, to here that have, that have the parking. Um, so you have that, you have as well, uh, so, uh, in, a, in the record, uh, a support letter from Councilor Tanya Anderson, Tanya Fernandez Anderson, and you have, uh, in court, in the record, submitted, uh, 57 signatures on a petition in support of this. Uh, so, you know, as, as Mr. Marini said, the, the effort here is just simply to shift a, uh, a curb cut over so that this safety concerns that have been raised by this family can be addressed. It is, is not significant, it's not removing a space from, uh, from on the street. So uh, we would hope that the board would uh, be favorably towards this proposal. And I pass it back to you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, to answer your question, most of the driveway are pretty kind of long driveways parking at the rear. Now some of the property do have some parking parked, you know, closer to the sidewalk. Um, but the topology is typically just a long driveway to the rear. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you. a question in terms of what's the current width of the existing curb? Curb cut? Mm -hmm. It's 18. It's, it's, it remains okay. it's just shifted and centered now. It's 18, 18. Okay. 18 feet. 18 okay. Feet. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Are there any other questions from the board? Uh, yes. Um, earlier, as they were talking, um, they had mentioned that they're doing this specifically for a family member who, mm -hmm. um, who has a disability, I believe. No, uh, no, uh, Mr. Secretary. What was mentioned is you know, they're doing it for the safety of and uh, provide off street parking for the following reasons. One is for um, for uh, Valerie, who is the nurse, in the time that she comes home, so that she has been able to go in. Two, that there uh, the there have been some changes in the neighborhood, which makes some of the safety concerns uh, prevalent. Three, because it's all resident parking, that if any of their uh, family members come to assist with childcare and other matters, the difficulty in terms of parking. And then the last one, they did mention that. Yes, if her mother came by who is disabled, they would want to be, have a place where they could pull into the car so she can have better access in terms of to the property. So those are reasons, uh, Mrs. Stenberg. Okay, may I but suggest- you But you currently Sorry. can use it as a, you currently can use, can park one park in one uh, car right now. Yes. yes. Yes, okay. Yes. Right, so theoretically, the person with the residential sticker could, park on the residential street. But with that, uh, I'm gonna open it up to public testimony because there 
we do have a full agenda and uh, you know, we've spent a long, long time on just the uh, presentation. So can we open it up to public, public testimony, please? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board, some background information on the community process. Uh, our office conducted an abutters meeting on May 3rd, where a number of abutters expressed opposition due to what they felt is increasing front yard parking, which would set a precedent potentially for the for that street. Uh, the applicant went on to meet with the local civic association, which is the Roxbury Path Forward, uh, which voted to oppose the project. Um, abutters collected a total of 47 signatures in opposition, and I believe as you heard from the uh, applicant, I believe there's also signatures in support as well. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other raised hands, Madam Ambassador? We have 11, 12 raised hands. Okay, well, let's, uh, um, well, it would be great if we could try to have those people who are um, opposed lower it first so that we can make sure that we're balanced and, and hear both sides, but you guys do your best. I'm, I'm not going to listen to 12. <laughs> uh, let's let's start with the three or four and see where we go. Okay. Sabine, you've been unmuted. Hi, my name is Sarah Chino, and I'm here on behalf of the Council of Lisbon. The Council of Lisbon, and I'm sorry, I, I did not hear if you were in support or opposition. Support. Thank you. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council at large, Michael Flaherty. Um, the council like to go on record in opposition with all due respect to the proponent, barring any extra circumstances, the council has been clear that um, he does not support uh, front yard parking. So at this particular point, he's in opposition. Thank you. Is there any... <clears throat> My name is Sabine. I am the sister of Valerie Just Mangles. I am a resident at 85 Gallivan Boulevard. I reside with my mother, who is the person in question, who will be visiting and supporting my sister with child care when necessary. Okay, she, so we assume you're in support, so we're going to keep going. I'm sorry. Let's keep going. Um, may, I, may I also say something? Because um, for those that are opposing, I hear you're opposed, but I do not hear a reason. If you could give a reason so that we can explain that would be very helpful because all I hear is no. And in the chat, I hear some, I see something about a tree. In my opinion, that is not a reason to not um, accept something. So, okay, if thank you. Could you. Say yes. why we will I ask for, that. yes, we will ask for reasons. Thank you. My um, mother is I'm also here. Help me. Can you please move on? Carl, you've been unmuted. Yes. Um, yes. Um, good evening, yes. Madam Chair and distinguished members. Um, I'm here with the abutter who lives right next door. Her name is Nadine Riggs, and she will give you the reasons that you would like to hear why she's opposing and, uh, you know, the reasons why all the neighbors are opposing this. I, she's going to take my place right now. She's right here, so she's going to use my computer. Is that all right? She's going to give you all your li all the list. Why. Well, actually, I'm not going to give reasons why. Okay. I'm just going to state reasons why the community has voted no. Um, as stated previously, we have 45 signed, three-page letter of opposition, and I am the direct abutter to the um, to 45. We share a, a firewall. I'm opposing this request for several reasons. First, Article 50 says no parking in the front yard. Two, Winthrop Street is a long street. We cover, we're about four to five blocks long. No one has front yard parking. Everyone either has parking on the side or a driveway that leads to the back. But again, no one has front yard parking. 45 already has an illegal curb cut for one parking space. So in terms of their reasons, which seem to be really just self-serving, when they purchased the property, no one misled them. You can look at pictures, Google old pictures. My neighbor, because I've lived at um, 43, I moved in in 2010. I purchased in 2012. When I moved there, my neighbor parked her very large 
um, station wagon in the front yard. It's always only been one car in the front yard. So in terms of their reasons of saying that they were told it was two car parking, it's never been two car parking because there's no room. Um, second, um, the developer's wife, Valerie, is a nurse. She works late hours. A lot of our neighbors work late hours. They already have one parking space. I would assume if Valerie's coming home late, that Michael's gonna do the husbandly thing and park his car in the front yard. I mean, excuse me, park his car in the street. Two, in terms of visiting family members, elderly, disabled, again, they already have an illegal off, off street parking in the front yard. So my assumption is if you have people visiting, you're going to make adjustments so that person can park in the front yard and access um, your home. Another point is we do have permit parking. It ends at 6 p.m. wide open. The only time Winthrop Street has a, uh, an issue with parking is when it's Sunday because we have four houses of worship on Sunday. When I leave my home on Sunday, I put out two cones. No one's ever bothered my cones, but that's the only time there is an issue with parking. There's always parking. And Thank the, you, ma'am. Can I say Thank just one more thing? At our one corner, thing. Okay, on our, at our corner, there are four houses, two of the residences and their multiplexes. They all have on-site parking. 43 and 45, we're the only ones who park on the street. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let's let's try to get one or two more before we move on. Violet, you're, you're unmuted. Yeah, so I mean, just everything that um, Nadine has said, I actually live on the lower end of Winthrop Street, and that is where there is an issue oftentimes with parking. In the in the block where Nadine and Nadine's home is in 45, there is parking, plenty, ample parking um, on the opposite side of the street. So, um, you know, to have... Um, Do you have any new reasons? So it's not, can no, you state I'm, I'm just, or I'm against just, and why? Okay, I'm just affirming what she said. That's it. So Thank you're opposed. You. Thank you. I am okay. opposed, yes. Okay, let's, let's take one more. Is Malia unmuted? I am still with the opposing, and this is Sabine, and I just want to answer Nadine or the other person who I just said that. Right. Folk. So we're, we're trying to take new testimony. Uh, okay. Folks. So can we please have someone new, Stephanie? Yep. District 7. And put your hands down if you've already spoken or if you're part of the application team or family. Thank you. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair and Board. Um, my name is Nicole. On behalf of the District 7 office and Councillor Tanya Fernandez Anderson, we are in very strong support of the curb cut. Um, we believe that this will greatly promote the safety for their family. This family has been in Roxbury and active in Roxbury for generations. And thank you very much. And that is in addition to a letter of support we have submitted. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I think. Um, Do you want more, Madam Chair? Or are you? Uh, I'm going to ask the, the, the members if you have any other questions or if you feel you need to hear any more. Ms. Barraza or and, um, Madam Chair, um, I know Vlad D'Amico spoke. Can you please read the Boston Transportation Department recommendation and also the Boston um, the uh, BPDA recommendation? I, I don't have Mr. D'Amico's in front of me. I'm not sure if. Um, okay, I can read. Remember it does. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So Bob D'Amico um, said uh, there's simply not enough room for regarding this case. Also, this request would result in front yard parking. I would like to request a denial in this case. So that's the BTD. And then um, for the BPDA, um, they're also recommending denial due to, um, uh, for one, um, new cur curb cuts should be at 10 feet. And, um, spaces that are there should be one compact and one standard size right now the applicant is proposing two compact space which is not allowed and this is why they are recommending uh, denial um, so with that i would like to 
um, put a motion forward of denial. May I have a second? Uh, no, I'd like to make another motion. Okay. Uh, since we have no um, unanimity, let's try another vote. Um, oh, I'd, another motion, sorry. I'd like to put a motion forward that we uh, defer this case uh, until a lot, the larger body can hear it. Um, there are good reasons on each side. Um, but I think if we have other people also listen to it, we may be able to pick up. So the short of that would be uh, to propose we uh, remove the case to the full body at a later date. Do we have a second? Um, Barraza, I would second that. Uh, then in the interest of moving this forward, uh, let's make a motion. I mean, let's uh, vote, um, Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Ms. Betabaraza? Yes. And the chair will vote yes. The motion carries. Uh, Madam Chair, this, this is Javier. For, for the next date, I would suggest not the July 25th as we have a very full schedule. I would not I would not suggest that either. So <laughs> please find a date that is not already packed. Uh, August 8th could be the next available full board hearing. All right, thank you. Yep. All right, next case. Next case is DOA 146-1000, the address being 86 Grampian Way. Is the applicant and or their representative present? Uh, yes, this is Shane Losey with Chew and Company Architects representing Maureen Murata. Um, I believe she's on the list as well. Um, this is for a proposed dormer on an existing single family, and we're asking for um, three, we had three violations that we're asking for the date from. The first is a extension of a non-conforming use. Um, this is a single family in a single family zone. So we believe that one was cited incorrectly. Um, the other two are dimensional violations, one for FAR, um, the, the zone FAR is required at 0.4. We are existing 0.42, and we're only adding 90 square feet. So the proposed FAR would be 0.43. Um, and we're asking for side yard, which the proposed dormer aligns with the existing side of the house. Uh, so in these pictures right here, the right side of the house, that's the side with it on the, the lower right corner, that right side of the house in that picture is the wall that's has the violation um, required is 12 feet and the average of the dormer is at 7.5 feet. Um, if you just go back a few slides, you can just note these last two dimensional uh, on the, sorry, on the site plans. Yes, so these last two dimensional regulations that were cited, there's an existing double lot. Um, the mortgage is only tied to the lot that the house sits on. If both lots were considered, neither of these would be violations. Um, so just in having the lot separate, create the two for the violations for FAR and for side yard. Um, there's existing, the dormer is creating room for a primary bedroom and bathroom, which will replace two smaller bedrooms. So we're actually reducing the bedroom count in the house from six to five. Um, and that's just gonna be, nothing is seen from the front of the house. The dormer is on the backside. So nothing is seen from the spot. You can see it as you go up the hill from the street on the side, but um, Savin Hill Park is across the street from this. And the dormer basically takes up the length of the backside of the house. But again, it is only adding 90 square feet to the overall size of the house, which we move forward, we can see that in the proposed floor plan. Uh, so these are your existing floor plans. You can keep going. Um, so this is uh, the next sheet, please. So this is the existing third or the proposed third floor plan where we see the dormer for the last few feet um, pushing out. So it's already, there's already a finish there up to this level and two bedrooms. So we're just 
again, making two bedrooms into one bedroom and a bathroom. You kind of see the set if there are a section on the right, the existing roof line, and then the proposed dormer. And then the next few slides show the elevations of what we're proposing. So we can see um, that. So on the side, we have the, the on the left side is the right side elevation where we see on the right portion that added dormer um, and the added balcony off the back of the proposed bedroom. And then on the right side is the rear elevation, again, showing uh, the proposed dormer across the, the length of the house. And we can take any questions. Okay, any questions from the board? I don't have any. Hearing none, may I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. Some background information on the community process. Our office conducted an abutters meeting on April 19th, uh, where the majority of abutters in attendance expressed support for the proposal. Uh, we received multiple letters in support, which I believe we forwarded to the board. Uh, and the applicant eventually went on to meet with the Columbia Savin Hill Civic Association, uh, where their general membership voted unanimously to support the project. Uh, with this, we'll defer to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City Councilor Frank Baker's office, would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Okay, hearing no other testimony. Well, Laureen, I see your hand is raised. Are you here for this case? She's the owner. Okay, so hearing no other public testimony, may I have a motion? Um, motion to approve. Do you want BPDA uh, design uh, review? With BPDA design review. Yes, yes. May I have a second? I second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Bedebraza? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Have a good night. Next, we have case DOA 9280 the address being 10 to 12 Bentham Road. Is the applicant and or their representative present? Anyone for 10 to 12 Bentham Road? Yes, Arlene Cruthard. Are you the owner? Yes, I am. Okay, Okay. can you walk us through your um, request? Okay, my name is Arlene Cruthard of 10, 12 Bentham Road, Dorchester, Mass. I've owned my home since 42905. I am proposing to put a two car driveway on my property. Um, Parking on my street has gotten worse over the years as other neighborhoods. A lot of people on the street have about three or more cars. Neighborhood has changed also. Also, I live next door to an Airbnb. And once again, parking is an issue um, for the street and myself as an elder person, safety is important also. <clears throat> um, but I would always hope to park close to my home when I do come home, um, sometimes that's not possible. Um, and I've worked closely with Ross, the liaison of Dorchester. I've gone to the abutted meeting and I passed out flyers and there was no objection. Okay. Um, it, are there questions from the board? I'm gonna ask us uh, before Ms. Bedebraza does, did Mr. D'Amico have a, uh, an opinion? <laughs> but I don't have the opinion in front of me. He, <laughs> so. he did, I, I, I have it. Um, it. Bob D'Amico from the Boston Transportation Department basically said there's not enough room for driveway and the minimum width should be 10 feet. I would like to suggest a, a denial for this case. Um, can so I? What is, the, what is the width of your? Uh, it, it's, it's longer than, it's the width, width 10 feet or more. I have the, um, is this revised of 2010? Let me see. I'm sorry. It was revised on 10 23 19 that it is 10 feet or more. Um, is this what you guys have here? I don't know. I can't I can't read that thing. It's so small. So I, if someone tells me it says more than that, then I'll 
I sent the updated. Um, yeah, this this actually does have ten feet, so you're okay. You're, they you're said, okay. You're okay yeah. with that. Um, yeah. The and, and the Boston. Also, so uh, the, other the, issue, the other also, issue is the, the front BPA yard. The BPA also commented. It would, it would um, be one bar behind the other, not side by side. Okay. That's Ms. better, Barraza, yeah. please. Yeah, go ahead. I'm yep. sorry. And also the BPDA um, commented and recommended uh, denial. And um, the reason for is um, that, that the, uh, I think, I'm I sorry. think it's the 10 feet and the front yard and or the front and the front yard, correct? Right. And off she park is not to be located, is to be located more than five feet from, from the side lot, side lot. So, so there's not enough yeah. side side yard setback. That's why they were recommending denial. Okay. There, it, even though it's one car behind the other, are you saying the width or are you saying the length? No. Uh, typically you should when you have um on site off street parking, you need to have a side yard at least five feet in dimension from your side lot. And currently it's at zero. Hmm. Or at least minimum, if I'm reading your survey plot plan, it's it's very minimum. But so I think I think we can move on to, yes. to um, testimony, but I just wanted to give you that feedback. Could I just, sorry, another clarifying question is, so there, is there a curb cut now or would you need a new curb cut? A new curb yeah. cut. Curb cut. Okay. I don't have a curb cut at the moment. I would have to get a curb cut. Okay. All right, um, let's go to public testimony. Understood. Thank you. That wouldn't be no problem. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, at this time, the Mayor's Office likes to defer to the judge from this board. As you heard the applicant mention, she was in touch with our office and flyers were circulated to a butters. Uh, I'm unaware of any concerns at the moment. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. I have no additional raised hands, Madam Chair. Okay. Any follow up questions, clarifying questions? Okay. With that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with a proviso that it will be for only one parking space. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Bedabraza? Yes. Chair also votes yes. The motion carries. Next and please. One parking space. That's no problem. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. Next, we have case BOA-143-6951. The address being 10 to 10A Walk Hill Street. The applicant and or the representative present. Yes, I'm here. Okay, can you identify yourself and your address and uh, what you're seeking relief for? Yes, um, my name is Emiliano Amoroso, I live in 449 Canal Street, um, Somerville, Mass. Um, the restaurant, um, Round Two Pizza and Subs, uh, is located at 10 Walk Hill Street. Um, I just need to uh, remove the provisor uh, for takeout. Um, there was a change of ownership, and I was told that uh, the old owner um, has taken the 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 permit for the takeout and I have to apply for a new one. So I, I just need to get the, the, um, the provider removed in order to get my own. Thank you. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. Any questions from the board? No hearing, questions. hearing none, may I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office likes to defer to the judge from this board. Our office is unaware of any concerns with this proposal. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Any other raised hands? I see no additional raised hands, Madam Chair. Thank you. Hearing none, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Bedabraza? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 147-2867. The address of 210 Rosendale Avenue is the applicant and or the representative present. Yes, sir. 
Uh, my name is Peter Severin. I'm the owner applicant, um, owner occupant for 210 Rosendale Avenue. Um, it's a single, uh, single family home, uh, two story single family home in Rosendale. Uh, we're proposing a um, dormer to the third floor for additional living space, uh, bedroom, bathroom, and a rear single story addition that does not need zoning relief as it meets current setback. Um, and also a um, replacement of our existing uh, non-conforming uh, rear porch to um, meet the length of the new addition. So the relief we're seeking is um, setback and height for our dormers. Any questions from the board? No questions, pretty straightforward. Yep, hearing none, may I uh, public testimony please? Is there any? I have one raised hand. Okay. Diana, you're, you're unmuted. Hello, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Diana Bronchuk from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, we defer judgment to the board. There was an abutters meeting held on May 23rd with low attendance. This project was presented to the West Village Neighborhood Association on May 25th, where there was no opposition. Our office has not received any concerns or statements from the community. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, we received many letters of support, and with that, I would like to put forward a motion of approval. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Sembridge? Yes. Ms. Bedabraza? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Next, next we have case BOA 147-1763 with an address of 247 Willow Street. Is the applicant and or the representative present? Mr. Feeney present. James Feeney. Mr. Feeney, you're yeah. on mute. Can you hear me now, board? Uh, yes, sir. I right, thank you. Um, uh, thanks for hearing this. Uh, we coming back in front of the board. We received a permit for shed dormers at 247 Willow Street. Unfortunately, the economics of that job were um, unattainable for us. So we scaled down the job and we are now looking for one more variance for the back of the house to go above um, the deck and kind of scale down the job. Okay. Uh, any questions from the board? No questions, straightforward. Thank you, Hearing none. May I have a motion? I mean, sorry, <laughs> may I have public testimony? <laughs> yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At uh, this time, the Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment of this board. Uh, the applicant met with the West Roxbury Neighborhood Council, which voted uh, unanimously on um, May 23rd to, to support this proposal. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other raised hands? I see no additional raised hands, Madam Chair. Thank you. With that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put a forward a motion of approval. Thank you. May I have a second? Mr. Stembridge, I need a second. And you're on mute. Second. Thank you, Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Ms. Bedabraza. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. I know we're getting tired, but we have a few more left. We have a few more left. Not Thank a, you, board. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 1440414 with the address of 89 Willow, Willow Dean Avenue. Is the applicant and or their representative present? Good evening, board. Um, my name is Dan Kasmerick on behalf of Matt Palmer. I am the architect for the project. Uh, on Willow Dean. Um, the project um, has an existing non-conforming side yard setback for one of the two um, addition pieces that we're proposing on the uh, rear of the house. There are no further setback um, violations um, for the project. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have public testimony? 
Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office likes to defer to the judgment of this board. Some back information on the community process. Our office conducted an abutters meeting on April 20th. Uh, no concerns were raised by abutters, and the applicant went on to meet with the West Roxbury Neighborhood Council on May 23rd, where they also voted to unanimously approve this project. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Any other raised hands? I see no additional raised hands, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, okay, with that, may I have a motion? I'm sorry, was that a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put a motion of approval. Okay, may I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Bedabraza? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 143 1753. The address is 12 Amherst Street. Is the applicant and or their representative present? Good evening, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Anthony Ross, 343 Belgrade Avenue in Roslindale, on yeah, behalf of the right. applicant. On behalf of the applicant, um, uh, the cooperative bank, uh, the bank uh, purchased uh, the adjacent property to the immediately abutting property to the bank, which was a uh, two family structure uh, in poor condition with much deferred maintenance. Uh, they made the investment in this property with the intent to raise the structure and utilize the property for a parking lot for 11 employee cars. This would allow the bank, which is the largest private employer in Rosendale Village and contributes to the economic vitality of the village, um, to, uh, to uh, continue to make that contribution while uh, relieving some of the parking congestion in the immediate area. The uh, parcel in question is in a two-family zone, but it abuts the bank, which is in the neighborhood shopping district, and the abutter on the other side of the property to the right-hand side at 1618 Amherst Street is in support of the proposal and has also agreed to work with the bank on installing shade trees along both sides of the common property line to mitigate the addition of the additional asphalt on the site, which was a concern that was raised in the community review process. Be happy to answer any other questions. Okay. Um... So can you just clarify the housing that's presently there? Is it Was it occupied when you purchased it or? Uh, it was unoccupied when the bank purchased it. It was in extremely poor condition. The bank looked into possibly reusing the structure and they made a determination that it would likely have to be raised. Okay. Are there questions from the board? So, so in this case, it'll be raised. It won't be replaced in anything. That's correct. And currently, you don't have any occupants. No, it's been vacant since the bank, since before the bank acquired the property. Okay. And how many um, parking spaces do you currently have on on the property that the bank is at, is at, is located? Um, I, I counted approximately thirty six. And 36 how many employees do you currently have? Uh, the bank tells me they have approximately a hundred employees at uh, exactly. their three at their three locations. Um, uh, but at, no, at the, the Roslindale at the Roslindale location, they have over sixty. They are working a hybrid schedule where they're having people come in three days a week and work remotely as much as possible to again alleviate uh, parking congestion and and uh, and commuting. Okay, I don't have any further questions. But actually, um, I would like to read um, both Bob D'Amico's comments on. Um, on the parking. Mm -hmm. So you basically, so from the BTD basically said, remove the space closest to the sidewalk, which will reduce the number of spaces to 10. Okay. And then for the BPDA, I'm just grabbing it right now, unless you have it in front of you. Um, BPDA says- uh, Yeah, so they okay. recommend, the BPDA recommends denial. Um, to, you know, in terms of context, demolishing a two-family home in, in a residential area is not aligned with the planning goals for the neighborhood. 
and then in regards to zoning, parking is not an allowed use and is out of context within the, with the neighborhood. And okay, and I have additional questions building on some of uh, Ms. Bedbrowse's questions. The 36 spaces that you have presently uh, on your on the bank site are they are they dedicated to employees only, or is that for customers and and or employees? That's for customers and or employees. Okay, and, so there's no designated number that are for employees per se. No, they're trying to keep the uh, the parking spaces at the bank on the bank site um, available for um customers as much as possible okay but currently employees are allowed to park there or they're not uh i don't know the answer to that i'm sorry to say i, I can say that i know that sometimes i see <laughs> bank employees parking there when i when i go to the bank myself okay no that that's that's fair uh, madam chair if i uh, recall correctly i do believe they have two parking lots one which is mainly for customers and the other which is strictly for the staff okay two on the same site you mean um mr Stem one one is one is on the site and one is down the street so yeah they have a second parking lot on belgrade avenue further up belgrade avenue which i is, see which is for the employees and, and then just for context for um, my colleagues the bank property is on a zoning subdistrict of neighborhood shopping but the this property that's in front of us is in a residential zone of um, 2F5000. That's correct. So all along Amherst streets, it's yeah. Um, yeah. residential properties. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the direct abutter to the right-hand side, which, which would abut this property, um, is submitted a letter of support and is in support of this in order to remove the, the structure that's been um, uh, a poorly maintained structure for, for such a long time. So, so much so that um, it, whether it could be uh, repurposed is, is uh, strongly in question. Understood. Um, let's take public testimony. I know there's, uh, you know, I, we saw a fair number in support and a fair number in opposition. And so I uh, just wanna make sure people have a chance to speak. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment of this board. Uh, we conducted an abutters meeting on May 16th where a small group attended. Um, many community members voiced concerns about the potential environmental impact of asphalt, asking for measures to reduce the, reduce the heat, heat island effect with landscaping. And attorney uh, um, Anthony Ross uh, said that the bank president would welcome such initiatives. Uh, community members also voiced some concerns regarding traffic and safety, uh, being that the lot is at the end of a one-way street. Um, the applicant pledged to work with Boston Transportation Department over the, the traffic flow concerns. Um, the project went on to present to the West Village Neighborhood Association on May 25th, uh, where some members brought up similar concerns to those of Butters. Unsure if that group ended up taking a, a final stance. Um, as mentioned, we've received letters of support from a direct abutter, as well as some letters of opposition from um, community members and organizations such as Walk Up Rossi. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board at this time. Thank you. Are there other raised hands? I see no additional raised hands, Madam Chair. Okay. Can I ask one other uh, clarifying question since Mr. Stembridge mentioned additional parking. Uh, do you know how much parking is available on this other site for employees? I do. Uh, there's 17 parking spaces on the other uh, parking lot. Um, I also wanted to mention that um, during the community review process, there were residents of Belgrade Avenue and Amherst Street who are in favor of this proposal to limit, uh, alleviate parking congestion in the area, as well as um, other businesses, uh, the Sullivan's Pharmacy is adjacent and, and the St. Nectarios Church and their parish members are in support. And uh, the last thing I'll mention, just in terms of impact on traffic flow, we are not proposing to change the curb cut. The curb cut would be repurposed. And we have pledged um, in, in, in response to the concerns about the heat island effect uh, to investigate the possibility of using more reflective um, paving uh, surfaces and also, uh, as I mentioned, um, the rear of this site is uh, 
the south, and it uh, has uh, <clears throat> quite a number of shade trees on the property at 45 Birch Street, and the abutter on the west side, uh, 1618 uh, Amherst Street, um, has uh, agreed to work with the bank on installing shade trees on both the bank side of the common property line and on the abutted, abutting properties um, side of the property line. Okay, um, any other questions from the board? With that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, um, given that the site is in proximity to the commuter rail and a lot of public trans transportation, um, I'm going to um, recommend that we, a motion for denial. Uh, I just don't see the replacement of residential housing that's currently zoned for residential to, to additional cars. It, it seems to go against the goals of uh, the city of Boston in promoting um, uh, the use of public transportation to reduce carbon emission. Um, so th that's that's why I'm putting forward that motion. Okay, well, do I have a second? Second. Okay, Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Ms. Bedbraza. Yes. The chair also votes yes, the motion carries. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA 143343 with the address of 141 Kohlberg Avenue. Is the applicant and or their representative present? Uh, I, uh, this is Eric Zacherson, architect of the project. I'm here to speak for it. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can. Can you just identify yourself? Um, Eric, Zach Eric Zacherson, 9 Sackville Street, uh, architect of the project, Context LLC. And if you could give us some background on it or, some, or it, someone. The, the project is for um, uh, Mrs. Pearson and her sister live in the, this existing home, have lived here for quite a while. Would like to add a small addition on the rear, which is basically a bedroom and a bathroom so that their, uh, her daughter can live with them and help take care of them as they age in place. Um, and eventually will not be able to handle the staircase. Um, there is a rear yard setback violation because of the orientation of the house towards Kohlberg. And then it, it is also under um, uh, overlay because of the boulevard that is adjacent to it. Any questions from the board? Okay, hearing none, may I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. Uh, some background information on the community process. Uh, we had the applicant circulate flyers to homes within 300 feet. Uh, we did not hear any feedback uh, or any concerns regarding the proposal. Um, and there's not believe, I don't believe there's an active civic association in this area. Um, with that, we'll defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Thank you. Any other raised hands? I see no additional raised hands, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, with that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA design review. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Betterbraza? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Next, we have case BOA um, for the rediscussion section on the, from 5 p.m. We have case BOA 1412546 with the address of 36 G Street. Is the applicant and or their representative present? I am. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is James Christopher of 686 Architects with the business address of 1156 Dorchester Ave. I'm here tonight on behalf of uh, Jean Fahey and Maureen Lane uh, for 36 G Street. 
It's currently a single family house. There is no uh, intent to change the occupancy. We are constructing a rear addition, um, which will be 20 feet off of the rear um, building at grade, and then another seven feet uh, at the second floor. Um, so on the first floor, we'll be matching our rear abutter, constructing a new kitchen um, and interior floor plans, uh, a new uh, cantilever deck at the rear, and then a master suite above. Um, if you go down to the next slide, the, there's the master suite. You can see our butters property to the left. Um, oh, these are the existing drawings. Scroll down. Sorry, keep going. That's the existing, existing, existing. Keep going. All right, proposed. Um, so we're constructing the the 20 foot rear addition, um, which would consist of a mansard roof. We worked with our director butter as much as possible to try to mit mitigate the concerns. Um, he would still like to see the setback a little um, uh, reduced a little, but we feel that this does not violate um, his view or impact his house um, in any way. The owners are, uh, have, have the uh, Jeans family has owned this house since the 1920s. And as a part of this um, addition, we'll, we'll return the house, we'll be renovating the full exterior uh, including trying to um, reproduce some of the, the dental moldings and decorative ornate wood along the front of the property. Um, so with that, I'll happily try to answer any questions I can. Thank you. Uh, with that, are there any questions from the board? No questions, pretty straightforward. Okay, hearing, uh, hearing none, may I take public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of this board. Uh, some background information on the community process. ONS and the Butters meeting on December 5th, 2022. Uh, there were roughly six of Butters in attendance. Um, those that spoke, uh, spoke in opposition to the proposal. Um, we later received one 311 call in opposition, um, one letter in opposition, and a letter uh, from the Gate of Heaven Neighborhood Association that was also in opposition. Um, the letter stated the Gate of Heaven Neighborhood Association is in total opposition to the proposed development at 36 G Street, South Boston. We as a group, as well as the media butters, have tried to work with owners of this property to reduce the size of the expansion to match the surrounding houses, uh, but to no avail. Uh, we are more than willing to support a smaller expansion to match the direct butter, but once again, uh, they only say no. In conclusion, from the above reasons, we want to go on record in opposition for this proposal. Um, with that information, we'll defer to the board at this time. Thank you. And sorry, Hi, my, I, I just wanted to add, ask a, a follow up question. The the folks that you said were opposed at a butters meeting, what was their stated reason? I believe it was it was uh, for the similar case, similar reason stated in the Gate of Heaven letter. Um, just concerns about the size and the scope of the uh, of the addition in the rear. Okay, sorry, Laura. Laura. Thank you. Hi, Madam Chair. I'm going to go ahead and read the letter. Um, please note that Council President Flynn submitted a letter of opposition along with his fellow South Boston elected officials, Congr Congressman Lynch, Councilor at Large Florida, Senator Collins, and Representative Biel. And he's read a read of as follows. Dear Board of Appeals Subcommittee, I'm writing to join nearly 50 of my neighbors and the Gate of Heaven Neighborhood Association in opposition to the proposed project at 36 G Street. The proposed project seeks to reconfigure and expand the existing rooftop structure, confirm the structure's occupancy as one family dwelling in a red arrear addition to the existing structure. Neighbors have expressed concerns that these change will be far too large for the existing structure and that these modifications will be inconsistent with the rest of the duplex that this project will occur on. Moreover, neighbors have noted that seemingly lack of hardship with respect to his proposal and that this property is owned by an absentee lot, lot landlord who has repeatedly neglected this property for years and created uh, quality of life issues for a -botters. This proposed project is also very close to the a budding properties, which will impact the sunlight and shadows of its neighbors, as well create issues with airflow, airflow and open space. This proposal is inconsistent with the character of the surrounding neighborhood, and residents have overwhelmingly expressed that it will negatively impact their quality of life. Therefore, I join my neighbors in opposition to this project. I hope that the Board of Appeals will listen to the community 
to reject this proposal and request for variances. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out at ed.flynn at boston.gov. Thank you, Council President Flynn. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council, Lodge, Michael Flaherty. Echoing the sentiments of Council President Rathian in opposition. Okay. Are there other raised hands? Haley, are you here to speak on this case? Yes, sorry, Haley Dillon from Senator Nick Collins' office. Um, we'd like to stand with our letter and speak in opposition. Thank you. William, you're unmuted. He's still muted. I don't know if, Stephanie, you can uh, impact that. Hold on. Go Mr. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yes, yep. we can now. Okay, so, so my name is William G. McDonough. I live at 34 G Street. We can't hear you again. Did he disappear? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. I don't know why that's happening. Uh, so I'm the director of butter, but I'm also attached. So it's different than being next to somebody. And then on the other side, there's a, there's a parking lot at 38 to 40. G Street, where I am the trustee of the parking lot association with this 24 parking spot. So I'm the butter on both sides of this property. Uh, <clears throat> my, 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 my main concerns are uh, being a construction supervisor, licensed construction supervisor in Massachusetts. I'm also a 40-year uh, member of the IBW Local 103, and I work 20 years in the construction department of the Boston Housing Authority. So I know a little bit about construction and what's going on here. All right, uh, this property next to me has, has been basically neglected for 30 years, and it's, and it's an eye store. It's probably the biggest eye store in South Boston. You say, well, why wouldn't you want it fixed? I want it fixed. But she wants to put on a 27-foot addition. goes 12 feet. Past. My, my house has a 15-foot addition on the back that her granduncle put on in 1937. If she wants to go 15 feet, the same length as my house, I've wrote the letter to the board. I've wrote the letter to everyone. I have no problem with the expansion, but she wants to go like 27 feet. It's going to block all the sunlight in my yard. My grandkids are going to have no more sun. Uh, the airflow, all kinds of problems. Uh, so I've talked to them. I've tried, tried hard to work with them. They, they don't want to have, have any, anything to do with anything. Uh, so we had an abutters meeting on the 5th of December, and uh, every, that was a Zoom meeting. No one there approved us. There was the uh, opposition, okay. and, no, and then there was another meeting on opposition. There's nobody. Okay, can can you just speak to your own opposition? We we've heard. Oh, so my opposition others. is they want to put yes, thank you. three three foot from my building. They want okay. three foot from my property line. They want to put a twenty seven foot high wall that's going to block all all my sun mm -hmm. and air and everything else. And so if they want to, I'm, and so I'm not against I'm not against people doing stuff work in their house. But if she wants to make it as, as big as my house, I will not oppose this. But as far thank as it is now, it's just way too big for the neighborhood. It's way too big. It's it's she uh, the, the the person who owns understood. the understood. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I, I also had a petition. I dropped stuff off. I sent pictures in. I hope you have those pictures. Thank, I also, thank you. I yes. also put a petition in with fifty eight names on it, and there there was uh, there were. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other uh, speakers? John, you're yeah, unmuted. Yes. Can you hear me? Can you follow me? Yes, 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 hi, my name is, uh, first of all, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is John Yetman. I reside at 538 East 4th Street. I also have rental property next door at 55442. I've resided on this block for uh, over 42 years, and I am in total opposition of the building that's going to uh, go on at 36 G Street. I, I won't bore you with all the stuff. You already heard it. Um, other than the building has never been maintained my whole time I've been living here and it's it's kind of a disgrace there's been raccoons that lived there over the years I've actually followed them because they went through my trash barrels and they were living in the house so it's it's not a good thing it's detrimental for my neighborhood and uh, thank you I'm, that's about I'm, well thank you okay uh yes. any other I have other one, more, one more hand please. all right we'll take this last one Luann you're unmuted thank you can you hear me yes Okay, great. My name is Luann O'Connor. I reside at 6 Shepton Terrace 
in South Boston. And my vote here is in opposition. The building itself, um, the lot is just too small to support this type of addition. And where Mr. McDonough lives, he would literally be looking at a sidewall uh, with no windows. It would block all of his sunlight. Uh, it is okay. a family home. So it, it's just too big. It's not the right project. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Madam Chair, can I have a moment to rebut? I do, I do have some what, questions. Yes, let, let, let's ask the questions first. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So um, it appears that your, your adjacent abutter has kind of a rear um, massing. Is it two stories or three stories high? where then you want to expand at the rear? The abutter, I believe is yep. two stories, will be two stories. Yeah, two stories, stories. okay. Correct. And you're proposing three stories two. in that expansion, correct? No, nope. two. Two, okay. Yes. So the it's almost, it's, it's almost similar to your abutter with the exception that you go out and I'm looking at the deck and then you go on top of that deck, almost correct. like there's, seven feet out. Is it seven foot? overhang at the second right. floor at grade we're even right but it's like a seven foot overhang okay right. um i mean and then your far what what's what's existing and then you're proposing i see even we're less only adding about five. 800 we're only adding about 800 square feet the existing right. far is 2556 square feet we're going right. to 3377 square feet the rear yard setback is still 20 feet. We meet all of the dimensional requirements. The only zoning violations that are not met here are the iPod South Boston zoning code violations. Right. So your your um your FAR is 1.35 proposed. Do you know what the FAR was, was existing? I don't have it in front of me, but okay. I can. But the it. increase is only you you said 600. It's 800 and 800 square feet. Yeah. Okay. I don't have any further. Um, questions. Thank you. Okay. And if I may, Madam Chair, um, you know, Briefly. we'd be happy um, to work with the BPDA on the limit of the rear wall extension. Um, we certainly appreciate Mr. McDonough's position. We did work with the uh, abutters. We did make changes to the plan, several actually. I met with Mr. McDonough at my office on separately on several occasions to try to work directly with him to resolve um, the concerns. Um, and we appreciate his position. He has it. And my client have this, um, but you know we believe that this is a viable project. We believe it's consistent with South Boston. It keeps the single family a single family. It keeps the driveway, and it still has a twenty foot rear yard. I do not feel that it is too big or that it is inappropriate for South Boston. I feel that is right in keeping. So, okay, we understand your position. So can I understand uh, when you say work together? So Mr. McDonough is is suggesting that if it if uh, the addition matched his addition, uh, he wouldn't have an issue. And it sounds like you're against that option. Is that correct? Uh, my client's purview is to keep the addition where it is. Um, and I think that that may have, you know, it, that is um, the position that I've been asked to take. Um, I'm happy, as I mentioned, if should the board think that the project on its merits is approvable, then we will work with the BPDA to, to establish the limit of the real wall. Okay, with that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, um, I would like to put forward a motion of approval with a proviso that the BPDA works with the applicant to reduce the rear extension so that it is um, comparable to the massing of its neighbors. Is that essentially what I just asked, Ms. Burr? I just want to make sure. <laughs> before it's I just vote. to put it on the BPDA to work with the applicant. And it's a proviso to the rear extension. Is it a proviso that it's for wanna... BPA design review, paying special attention to the rear? But you're not you're not limiting the expansion if they decide that it's it's uh, reasonable as is. It's up to the BPDA so that they can ask the applicant to do a shadow study if needed. But I'm I'm not okay. going to put those set limitation. It is to work with the context of the nearby uh, buildings. Okay, uh, may I have a second? Hearing 
None. Do I have a uh, um, second? No. That's fine. Uh, Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Ms. Betterbraza. Yes. So the chair votes no. The motion does not carry. Do we have an alternate motion? Do you want to put forward a motion, Madam Chair? Uh, uh, I would put forward a motion of approval uh, with the addition being no more than the, uh, the addition next door. So working with the neighbors and BPDA to ensure uh, the alignment. Okay, Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Ms. Betabraza. No. Okay, so that motion does not carry either. Samantha, would you like to suggest an alternative? Madam Chair, if you feel that it's appropriate to defer this to a full board, um, that would be your call. Um, but if we can't come to a conclusion on a motion, then it would be denied and the motions would fail. Do we have an alternate motion? Madam Chair, I would like to put forward a motion of denial without prejudice. Do we have a second? Second. Ms. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Betterbraza? Yes. The chair also votes yes. The motion carries. Final case. That would be case BOA 145. 0701 with the address of 3335 Shaw Street. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Alex Rodriguez. I'm here on behalf of my father, the applicant Ruben Rodriguez, uh, for the denial uh, or rather deferral, the initial denial for plans to extend uh, a second floor living space in a two family home into the attic for the purposes of a master suite. Um, previous reason for deferral was unclear hand-drawn plans, which are included in the attachment you have towards the end. Um, these are the newer, cleaner, non-hand-drawn plans as requested by the board. Um, not sure what else to say next. Uh, the You're fine. So the uh, violations that we have standing were extension of non-conforming use as a two-family in a single family subdistrict. This is an existing single family, I'm sorry, an existing two family home uh, with a street that has a, 10 other two family homes already on it. So that's existing and consistent with the rest of the neighborhood. Um, the other two violations are for excessive FAR and number of stories occupied being exceeded. Um, as far as the FAR, we currently are at, sorry, let me just pull that up. Um, the building as it stands is already past the current FAR um, allotment of 40%. It sits currently at 42%. Our proposal would add a total of 621 square feet, bringing the total FAR up to 49%. Um, we are in a single family district. Uh, however, there are, as mentioned, multiple two family homes on the street. And at least four of those other homes also currently surpass their FAR. We believe that the the zoning that is more applicable to our specific street and neighborhood would be the two family zoning, which would allow for up to an 80% FAR. Um, any question? I'm gonna ask if there are any questions from the board. Yes, I do have some questions. What's what? your ceiling height in the attic space? Ceiling height in the attic? That you're gonna make habitable. 11. Give me one second. 11 feet is the current ceiling height. Okay. So there and are- there is yep. a sloping and roof. are you doing, I'm sorry, I just have additional questions. Are you not, you're not doing any exterior work. It's working within the envelope. Correct. No exterior. Okay, great. And I really appreciate um, you, your applicant actually doing measured drawings. It's very helpful. Okay. I don't have any further questions. Okay. With that, can I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment of this board. Um, during the community process, uh, neighbors had questions, but no concerns, uh, seeing as this is to, to legalize the two family 
Um, we're unaware of any concerns at this time. We'll defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Any other raised hands? I see no additional raised hands, Madam Chair. Okay, with that, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put for a motion of approval with a proviso that there'll be no building code um, relief granted. Okay, may I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Ms. Bettabraza? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. And, and have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. Thanks for staying. Bye. 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 Bye.